Hey, it's Jay. I'm back with the video. It's been a little while, but today I want to talk to you about Chef and Azure uh, Resource Manager. Uh, I've put together some stuff for you that I think you'll really enjoy learning from. So let's go through it pretty quickly. Um, I've created a few things that you can use to uh, start building with uh, ARM. Uh, it's a really easy uh, way to build an ARM templated based uh, server. And then what I'm using is uh, Chef. Uh, so I've got a Chef Automate server. They're really easy to configure. Um, to do so, you can just go here into the portal. You can uh, create a Chef Automate. I've created uh, an application uh, here that uh, uses MongoDB, Node.js, NPM, Nginx, it installs Git, grabs uh, a repo, and uh, then configures an application. What I've done uh, is I've already set up Chef as far as Chef Server through Automate, uh, and I've already uh, uploaded my Chef resources. Uh, so my cookbooks, my roles, everything. So I've done a lot of the big work that you would associate with Chef already. Um, so I basically have a ton of resources re ready to go as far as installing all the dependencies that are part of my application. Um, so I've got a bunch of them up already. You can see, and if we go into Chef Automate, you can actually see some information about the nodes that I've created, their converged status, uh, information about them. Um, the stuff that's installed, uh, the last report, but the thing is, is how do we actually get the nodes created? So uh, we're using Azure Resource Manager and uh, I'm going to go over a couple things that I think you may find interesting. Um, so getting started, uh, Azure Resource Manager is the interface for managing and organizing cloud resources. So think of Resource Manager as a way to deploy cloud resources. Um, what I really like is this concept of being able to uh, put everything in a box. Um, so all the resources that I work with go into a resource group. That resource group is kind of like a container or a box where all the resources I need, uh, so our chef server, the VM uh, that we're going to actually install that on, um, then eventually the VM nodes that we're going to use uh, for infrastructure and uh, other portions like the VNet, the virtual network. It's all done through the Azure Resource Manager and all these resources can be copied and moved into other groups. Um, so there's a couple different ways of doing it. So we've got the CLI, which kind of looks CLI-ish. Uh, and then we've also got a REST API, uh, which allows you to go ahead and create different parts of Azure and your application requirements or infrastructure requirements uh, via a REST API. So you can just send via Postman or a curl to an API uh, how to create and build things that you need. And then on top of that, you can create things right through the uh, control panel. Uh, the control panel or, or the portal, as you will, will allow you to just point, click, and go. That may be easy for you as well. Um, so the uh, Azure Resource Manager itself is a template, and that template is made up of JSON. And, and that creates what we call like a declarative uh, automation. And declarative automation means that you can define what resources you need and how you want to create them. Um, and then you can essentially read them uh, via ARM and have ARM create the resources you, you request. So he, here's an example of uh, an ARM template and why use them. Like first of all, provides a common language and consistency for others to describe your deployments. So it doesn't matter if you're using the SDK, you're using a template, or you're using the uh, CLI, it's, it's all going to be the same uh, ingested language. The other things is templates help express complex deployments. So uh, there could be multiple resources that need to be uh, deployed in a certain order, um, you, you don't necessarily want to create, say, a VM before you actually um, have a disk that it's going to go on or a network interface. So the uh, resource manager helps you map out everything um, declaratively. 
And uh, templates help reduce manual and error prone tasks. So by codifying everything and using a repeatable function that's in uh, JSON format, uh, it's in code, you can run tests, you can ensure that what you're looking for happens every single time. Uh, and templates are code, like I said, that, that term codify. You can express what exactly it is you want build via code. And the great thing about that is you can control it with Git and use the same kind of practices that you may already be doing for building applications and doing software development. You can uh, build all that in infrastructure uh, and save it as code. So why do things the hard way is the kind of way I, I think of it. And then also uh, templates are linkable, which means uh, you can link them together to create modular uh, resource templates. So you can write a small template and then embed that, embed that into a larger template. Um, so it means templates are really, really um, extensible. You can do tons of stuff with them. Uh, so this is what's in an ARM template. Like I said, it's a JSON file. Um, and, and you just insert exactly what it is you need within this JSON file. So there are different uh, areas that we can see are making up the uh, JSON file in the template. Um, first, what we have are parameters. I think I missed, yeah. We have parameters. So this can be the basic information like username for a VM uh, and how the password is entered. Uh, you could also have in here instead of an admin password, SSH key. It all depends on you using the uh, correct syntax. Uh, the next are the variables and this is where you can define values that are used throughout the template. Uh, variables can help make your templates easier to maintain. For example, you might want to define a storage account uh, one time as a variable and then use that variable throughout the template. And if the storage account name changes, you only need to update the variable. Uh, these are functions, and functions are where you define procedures that you don't want to repeat throughout the template. So like variables, functions can help uh, make your templates easier to maintain. Uh, here's an example that creates a function to create a unique name that can be used when you're creating resources that have globally unique naming requirements. So uh, incremental server names or um, new names for uh, disks that you want to increment. Uh, you don't want to have the same exact names because you want things to be identifiable. And then resources, and this is where you can define the Azure resources that make up your deployment. Um, here's an example that creates a public IP resource. We've got outputs, and uh, outputs, so this is where you can define any information that you'd like to receive when the template runs. So remember how we set up before over here, our unique string, or if we wanted to get our output of what a, a fully qualified domain name would be, uh, it would come out here. So this is where you will make sure after the template runs, information that you need will be output, uh, so that if you need to do more programmatic work, such as let's glean or let's get what the IP address is for the new uh, VM, and let's apply something, that's how you would create that kind of uh, full pipeline inter, uh, interaction that you're looking for. Um, and if you want to create an ARM template, you can use the portal. Um, you can start with a template or your team can build templates that serve similar purposes. Uh, you can start with uh, one of the quick starts. I think that's really easy. And you can use some of the VS Code tools. Uh, I'm gonna show you a ARM template that is already ready to go. So let's go over to Cloud Shell. And uh, I've created this deploy ARM bash script. And if we go here, all it really is is this with uh, a point to one of our template files and then gives some parameters associated with my public key and my username so I can get into it. So let's take a look at the actual template. So the template itself is going to create a, uh, a server that allows me to SSH in with my key. It is going to create a virtual network, an SSH rule, so that I can get into it. 
Here's information about the network interface, the virtual machine that we're actually going to create, so the virtual size. We can modify that if we want to using parameters. Uh, then it's the kind of VM we're going to use, and it's an Ubuntu server. So you can grab this. This is a publicly accessible uh, template. It's in the docs, and I'll put all of this within the information for the video. So let's go ahead and execute uh, this template so we can build a VM, and then uh, I'm going to deploy something with Chef with it. So let's go ahead and let's type bash deploy arm, and like I said, it's just running this. So we need a project name, and I'm just going to increment one of my server names. So I'll just go with VM4. I'll hit return. Remember, for this to work, you do need a uh, a full uh, chef server for this to have uh, a start and finish situation. I've already got that. Um, if we go over here, I can type uh, knife node list. My Ruby is a little messed up. I need to uh, fix my Ruby sometime. Uh, but if you see knife node list, I've got my list of servers. I've got a running chef server already. Uh, that's what this chef automate server is here. Um, like I said, it's super simple to get started if you want to use chef automate for your uh, configuration management for your application. And it's, it's really uh, a point point click creation of your chef server. Uh, then you can just copy to clipboard the URL, you go and you configure a few parameters. Um, you could either use a license or you can use the 45 uh, day free. Uh, I've mentioned it before in previous videos. If you want more information on that, check that or, or just look at the Chef Automate uh, documentation. I'll put that in the video information as well. So uh, let's wait a minute and uh, when I come back, our Chef uh, VM uh, 04 should hopefully finish and then what we'll do is talk about how we're gonna bootstrap it all right we'll be right back so hey uh, it's done it only took a few minutes and actually if we go here into virtual machines uh, we can refresh there we go there's our new VM and I bet it's ready for me to SSH into so let's go ahead and connect I'll use Cloud Shell, it's the easiest way. Yes. Bam, so we're in. So what does this have on it right now? Well, pretty much nothing. It's just a base uh, server. It's got nothing running on it yet. And I wanna turn it into a web server. I wanna make it available and ready for my application. So uh, what am I gonna do? Let's uh, just go ahead and uh, there's two ways of thinking about this. Now, there are extensions, and the extensions that come with uh, Azure allow you to install a bunch of different third-party agents. Uh, what's really cool is that uh, there is one for Chef. So if I wanted to use the Linux Chef extension, uh, all I have to do is go here, and I wanna show you how cool this is. So let's create. Cool, so now it says our bootstrap has been done. Let's take a look. Now we have this server here that we just added. Cool, now let's log into the machine and take a look. So we'll go over to overview, connect. Grab a cloud shell. Come on, cloud shell. It's taking a second, so let's just cool. And let's chef client. It'll start running Chef Client and Converge. Oh, looks like our last Chef Client's still running. All right, cool. So yeah, it, it's installed. It's doing what it's supposed to be doing. Um, let's go to Node State.
looks like it's still running okay something failed let's take a look at what failed oh a part of my um, that's fine it was just a kill so let's uh, when the app first runs it runs a kill on NPM processes so let's do a uh, chef client once more just to make sure everything is good to go I like to do one extra chef client run um, but as you can see now we've got our new chef uh, server it's been installed via a uh, extension uh, we can still do standard uh, types of chef bootstraps uh, via command line if we wanted to but I wanted to show you how you could do this right by an extension within the panel and what's really cool and, and let's show you this part is now we can actually further add this to a uh, arm template because we can go to oops, export export template and within the export template section is going to be the chef Linux extension server. So we're able to actually export this and then uh, customize it for future installs and um, make sure that we actually have chef bootstrap upon build. So we're able to then take this, add it to a Git repo, codify it, and have a full uh, infrastructure as code solution for our app. So we see this is all done. Let's go to the dashboard. Let's go to our new server. Right here. We'll grab the public IP address. Here's my application. And I'm going to add my name, Jay Gordon. Uh, J at email. Dot com. You don't need my email address. Uh, then we're going to put my age. Yes, I'm 40. Don't don't start. Uh, mail and then add. Cool. Now let's let's just show you. Let's do Mongo. Let's show databases. Cool. Let's use test. Let's show collections. Users DB find users, and we'll use Pretty Print. Oh, user's fine. That's what happens when we do it live, folks, but that's the whole thing. Cool. So there I am. And now if I add another, we'll put my full name. Uh, let's add new. J Gordon 2. Cool. J at email 2.com. Uh, 40, not 50. And mail. And then add. There we go. So what's really cool and what we could do here is rather than install Mongo, we could use these uh, VM instances that we have here uh, to be back ended by something like Cosmos DB. So then you can use all these as stateless front ends. And then if we wanted to do a little even more, we could actually move these into containers. So here's kind of your first step into uh, infrastructure as code. Uh, I've given you ton of information I know uh, I'm gonna have a lot of links that you can find down below in the uh, comment section so if you have any questions get in touch um, keep using uh, these DevOps tools to help you make uh, your applications deploy much quicker all right thanks a lot I really appreciate you watching this video leave a comment uh, rate it whatever it is uh, and if you want to find me I am easy to find on Twitter so, at JDestro. Uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.